James Ward had no doubt about what to do with his life. I had done very well with performance and music. Um, I also had a strong business acumen. I understood the, the, the corporate side of music, the industry side. And that was my interpret that was my my you know my goal for myself that I was going to be the, the next Quincy Jones or the next David Foster, the ne next great you know music producer. By age 22, he was well on his way. A talented drummer, he and his jazz band were on the road. One night, the plan changed abruptly. And I'll never forget, I was in Boston. You know, we had just finished this show um, with a band that I was touring with, and um, interactive people were around having drinks and having cigars. And I, and I hear within myself the voice of the Lord. And there was no question about who it was, but it was, it was one of the most authoritative times I've ever heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and say, James, I want your life. James had professed faith in Christ as a boy, but wandered from God in college. He decided it was time to put God first. You know, the lifestyle of, of drinking and smoking and having different girlfriends, all of those things had to change. And, and for me, I'm, I had to change some numbers and to remove myself from, a, from an environment that would cause me to stumble. James walked away from music. He found a church and was mentored in his faith. Later, he married and also sensed a call to be a pastor. In 2008, he enrolled in Regent University for theological training. It's been one of the greatest, greatest uh, decisions I've made in my life. I was just simply overwhelmed with the, the depth of, of understanding and intellectual thinking, the depth of uh, passionate theology. You know, I was already involved in full-time ministry when I went to Regent University, but I found that, that Regent enriched and enhanced what I already knew. You know, if medical doctors have to train to the highest degree to give their best services, why wouldn't pastors and preachers also stretch themselves intellectually uh, to, to, pri to provide the very best ministry that they possibly could to God's people. Today, James is the pastor of Insight Church near Chicago. In 2014, he wrote Zero Victim, which reflects his passion to help others succeed by overcoming a victim mentality. I define victim mentality as a, as a conditioned mind uh, that sees itself as the victim of the uh, injustices or the negative thoughts words or, or actions of other people. The idea stemmed from his experience growing up in Tuscaloosa, where many blamed others for their circumstances. I grew up on the south side of the city, which was typically known as the black side of town. It was just this understanding that um, white people were somewhat not for you, and a lot of the challenges that we were experiencing was because of white people. So when James was bused to a new school in third grade, he thought at best he'd face discrimination. At worst, he'd get beaten up. But instead, he thrived. Zero victim mentality, it begins to control the world within you. And that is the only way to really uh, bring about the racial harmony, the gender harmony, the ethnic, ethnic harmony uh, that we really need in our nation. James says the ultimate example is Jesus Christ. I marvel at this idea that the only innocent man that ever walked on the face of the planet, he suffered the greatest injustice that anyone has ever suffered being crucified not for his sins but for someone else's sins and so i really think that the zero victim mentality is the mentality of christ himself and uh it's what what america needs in this hour it's a great time for the church to shine it's a great time for the gospel to be preached and to prevent for, to present the solutions that are in the word of god that can only solve the challenges that we're facing as a nation